Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me as I explore the wide world of Pen BBS pens. I uh, did an initial review of the Pen BBS 535 Year of the Ox pen, and I liked it on many levels. So now, as you see, it's been filled with ink. It's a nice blue ink. We're going to write with the pen now. Kind of like a reverse order of what I do in my videos usually. But then after we do the writing sample, we're going to go through the whole process. We're going to take the pen apart. We're going to put it back together. We're going to show you how to fill it, and then we're going to come back for closing comments. The cap comes off in a little over one turn. The thread's at the end of the section. The section is fine. It's a good size. It's the, about the same size as any pen BBS section. There's no transition between the section and the, and the clear barrel, so you can hold it anywhere. Because of this small cap, if you want a place to put it, it easily screws onto the back of the barrel. It doesn't change anything. Unfortunately, clip doesn't line up with the nib. It would have been a nice thing to do, but it requires a lot of engineering and a lot of planning and a lot of testing. And for the price of the pen, I'm willing to accept where it ends up. It looks okay this way. It looks okay this way. So we'll give you the dimensions of the section. We'll give you the weights of the pen. We'll give you the lengths of the pen. We'll give you some time to digest those numbers. Now it's time to see how that pen BBS blue ink writes in the 535. So that's a very nice, unique nib. It is a fine nib. And it's that slight upturn at the end, which Pen BBS is known for in the majority of their fine nibs. I normally buy medium. I bought this on Tobu Focus. Thought it was a medium and arrived a fine, and I checked back and I did order a fine, but that's okay with me. Let's see how this fine nib writes. So you got to see what happens when you don't open up the blind cap. So that's how much writing I was able to do. Now the blind cap is open. Ink is flowing to the feed. So we'll do the crosshatch again. And we'll do a schmear. So overall, this is about the best steel nib I've used from Pen BBS in the fine series. It's very smooth. No feedback. It just glides. Lays down a generous amount of ink. It feels really good. So now we're going to show you the bits and pieces, the insides and outsides, the engineering, how the filling mechanism works, and we'll come back for a final statement. You may ask, how does the 535 come apart? And I'm showing you what I'm going to take apart. Taking apart the draw filler, you just have to get a wrench in there on the flat spot on the threads, unscrew it, and everything comes apart. I've already taken uh, the 355 apart, so I'll give a reference to that video. The nib assembly just unscrews from the section, but the section is 
one it's glued in place it's certainly not coming out i'm certain they did that because of the threads there they didn't want the people unscrewing it by mistake the top of the cap has this plastic plug which has a phillips head screw in it which connects to this little medallion that sits in the top of the cap there and then that holds in this clip as it goes into a little slot you know this is a classic design method that a number of uh, pens use to secure it you know the other classic design is where you have the dual fold one where there's a big plug here that screws in and out I'm saying it's about 50-50 into which design is being used. You know, that's the number. That's the ox. And there's PEMI BS and another one. So, I haven't come up with an ink yet. But, will do shortly. Well, I certainly misspoke when I said this was the same size on the 535 is a 355 it is certainly not it's much smaller and a quarter inch wrench will fit or a small adjustable wrench will work to unscrew that metal piece like you could do on the 355 so it works the same way that way well I decided to use my adjustable wrench to unscrew this piece from the barrel and the reason I did that was is when I came up and engaged the piston, I couldn't push it down. I gave it enough force that I thought was necessary, so I figured I would take it out. And I've added some silicone grease there. But you can see how it works. So when you pull the piston up, if you turn it clockwise, turn it in this direction, that releases the piston rod from the piston, then you can push this down and seal off the ink flow. When you want to fill the pen with ink, you pull this up, you turn it in the counterclockwise direction that engages the piston, and as you can see from these little fingers, they move into that groove, so when you're, when you're unloosing in it, you push in this direction, and those hold the piston up there when you come back again you turn in the opposite direction which move those little fingers to the opening and then you can use the piston to fill the pen it's a very very nice clever design i really appreciate it and this ring just comes off so you got to be careful you don't lose that when you take off the piston so now when i put in the piston it is a tight fit but it moves up and down easily now. So when we go in there, you can originally start the threads by hand. And then at the very end, I'm just going to use the wrench to give it just a slight little bit of torque to hold it in place. So once we give it a little bit of torque, and I don't like adjustable wrenches because you got to keep turning them, but just about an eighth of a turn locks it in place. So now it moves fine. When you bring it up and engage the piston, it moves. When you bring it up and release the piston, now only the stopper moves with that piston rod. Very nice design. I like it. So the other change that they did when they changed this piston rod assembly to this bayonet version, they used a, a metal pin to attach this blind cap to the top of the piston rod. Uh, I talked about what they did before, but this is a much more secure situation. Whenever you turn this knob, it's going to turn the piston rod. So therefore, it's always going to be consistent in how it works. Which is nice, because it's not a simplistic filling mechanism, but is very efficient and works well. So this is the ink I decided to use. 
It's an ink I haven't used much. When I first used it, I really enjoyed it and then moved on to a lot more other inks. It's number 5112. I don't know the name. It is just a very, very nice blue ink. There might be a little bit of sheen. I don't know whether I can catch it with this light I have. And the chromatography shows it to be just a clean blue. That's it. No water resistance. A blue ink. So you ever have one of those days when nothing seems to go right? So I've already thought I filmed filling the pen. So there's some ink left in there after I pushed out the filling that I didn't film. You know, the camcorder, you got a button that you press it, it records, you press it, it stops recording. When I'm on a roll with doing videos, I just press the button thinking I'm doing what I'm doing. So I stopped the video when I thought it was actually starting it. So we're going to do it again. And the red light is on. I know it's recording. So we're going to unscrew the blind cap. Pull up the piston. Keep moving in the direction of, of unscrewing it. Eventually it'll seat itself and it connects to the piston. We're going to bring the piston down. We're going to insert it into the bottle of ink. Make certain it's completely covering so the ink is coming up to the section. And then we're going to just pull up the piston. And it does a great job of pulling up ink. There's already some ink in the feed so there's hardly any air there at all. Great fill. You bring it all the way up. You turn it clockwise and you can see that piston is now disconnected from the rod. While we're still over the bottle of ink, we're going to bring the rod down slowly. Occasionally a few drops of ink might come out from doing that because it's displacing some ink. Go all the way down, tighten the rod, and now we have a pretty full fill. I'm happy. There's been a lot of discussion about how shutoff valves work in the 456 and the 355, and now the 535. So the shutoff, the blind cap is all the way screwed in, which means that little rubber seal at the end of the piston rod is sealing any ink from going into the feed. And you can see there's an air gap there between the little bit of ink in the feed and the stopper. If you turn it upside down, you'll notice no ink goes into that space. So if we undo the blind cap, we've now unthreaded it. And now we're lifting up that seal. And there you'll see the ink come down. So I really had to lift it up quite a bit. So I keep all my pens at a desk. They're all nib up. So I don't screw down the blind cap. I leave it open. So when I take the pen to write with it, I don't have to worry about running out of ink. If you turn it upside down, you'll notice the ink will come down. If you shake it a little bit, it'll come out of that feed again. And if you wanted to seal it up, you bring up and you screw down the blind cap. And now you have ink isolated from this large chamber from the feed. Great design. It works well on all the pens that I have. So hopefully you've enjoyed that engineering view of the 535. I really like the pen. I have too many pens that look the same, feel the same, and this is unique among them. On all the levels, from that nice nib to the way the cap works, the filling mechanism, that draw filler works extremely well, very efficient. I don't know how much ink, it's a lot. The only thing I would say artistic viewpoint is that ring, I think, could have been a plain ring. Yes, uh, those facets do give it some interesting characteristics, and I'm certain some designer somewhere said, wow. Speaking of designers, PenBBS is a bunch of pen nerds. They've been around for a while. 
maybe 30 years. And I love the fact that they're making such great pens. And they continue to outdo themselves. So let's rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.9. .9. Yes, hold on to your socks. Get that sphincter nice and tight. I'm going to give it two checks because it is a unique design. Combining a draw filler with the way that cap is designed. Uh, the 2021 year of the fox, the year of the ox. They try to do something unique for each year, and, and I really appreciate that. I don't know whether pen company that does it to the level of detail that Pen BBS does. The nib also gets two checks because it's a great nib. And I'm just going to get one check for WTF. Let's give it another check. Why isn't it a 10? Because I decided it wasn't a 10. I had to put some room for... Pen BBS, year of the pen, 2022. Hopefully we're all around for that. I really enjoy putting down ink with this pen. I love the way it feels in my hand. I love that little flare out at the end of the section. I love the fact that there's no step, no threads, no nothing, just a smooth transition. And I love to move my fingers around when I write. And this pen allows me to do that to every level. We've reached the end of this video, so thank you very much for watching. I just love the way this nib feels. Hopefully you find a pen you fall in love with, a nib that you love, an ink that you love, and you start putting ink on paper and enjoy doing that. Because that's the whole reason to me for having pens. And I have more than I can ever write with, but that's just what I do. Hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying every day to its fullest. Enjoy getting up in the morning, looking forward to the day ahead. So this is the end of this video. There will be more to follow, as you know. I got a lot of material to cover. So we'll say bye for now. She's just a great writer.